Freedom Friday. West Australians unmasked after 102 days, ripping off the COVID band-aid and a raft of restrictions. Plus a Mandra mother charged with murder, accused of killing her 14-month-old son. Anthony Albanese out of isolation and in the West ahead of his campaign launch. The Outback mission to rescue a WA hiker bitten by one of the world's deadliest snakes. A drug smuggler's phone fumble that helped unravel a billion dollar plot. And Rottnest Goes Green powering the holiday hotspot into the future. This is Nine News Perth with Michael Thompson. Good evening. WA is tonight officially living with COVID. Almost all restrictions have been lifted from mask mandates to proof of vaccination and close contact rules, finally putting us in line with the rest of the country. Struggling businesses hoping it will lead to a spending boom with bookings already flooding in. Freedom Friday. <laughs> Our city unmasked and smiles let loose. It is pretty exciting to see everything go a bit back to normal. It's good to have the choice. And to not wear it at work as well is going to be great. It's good to breathe. <laughs> the COVID band-aid ripped off right before the weekend. It's great. Everyone's really just seems a lot happier. It's nice walking into a pub and seeing everybody's smiling faces, to be honest. They've been a facial feature for 102 days. Now masks are only required at hospitals, aged care, the airport, and on public transport, but some still choosing to keep them firmly fitted. Just due to the number of cases still, a lot of people are off work with COVID at the moment. Rather than being given a cold shoulder, people that continue to wear masks indoors should be given a thumbs up by the rest of society. No more density or capacity limits at pubs, clubs, events and restaurants, and you don't have to be vaccinated to wine and dine. Venues have seen a massive rise in inquiries and bookings. It's corporate, it's business, it's leisure, it's family, uh, it's individual couples, it's across the board. Our staff have got beautiful white teeth that you haven't seen for a long time, <laughs> so we're really excited to show, show what we can do. Close contact rules have also been scrapped. From today, if someone in your house catches COVID, you won't have to isolate. What I didn't want to do, and I've said this the whole way along, is have restrictions in place beyond when we need to have them in place. Uh, because then you lose people's support. Interstate arrivals aren't required to be triple dosed or even vaccinated at all. The G2G is no more. For two years, police have been stationed at our border and the airport. Those officers now returning to normal duties. We're very keen to get tourists um, out of the east into Western Australia to enjoy the best state in Australia. Our CBD has done it particularly tough in these COVID times, but businesses hope this is the turning point. This morning I noticed the freeway was a lot busier. Uh, little metrics like that really helps boost our enthusiasm. We thought we'd seen the last of QR codes, but they're now being used to attract people back to our struggling city. People can find QR codes all over the city. It's something that's really simple for people to do and then they can go in the drawer for over $60,000 worth of prizes. More than 8,000 new COVID cases today, but what would once have been the headline is now a footnote as we take another step into the new normal. We're obviously not out of the pandemic yet, uh, but obviously we can see the finish line. And Natalia Cooper, full crowds are allowed back at Optus Stadium. Yes, they are, Tomo, but the stadium won't be at capacity tonight. 42,000 fans are expected, which is pretty good considering the Eagles' form so far this season and the fact that people might still be a little shy about getting out and about. Staff at Optus Stadium have been told to keep wearing masks for the time being, despite the mandate being dropped. But not many masks at all among the fans tonight, Tomo. Not surprising, Natalia. Thank you. Amandra's mother has been charged with murder, accused of killing her 14-month-old toddler. Paramedics tried to revive the little boy, but he couldn't be saved. Jerry DeMassey, the 28-year-old woman, is tonight behind bars. Michael, this is a tragic case and we can tonight reveal that the results of a post-mortem have identified serious internal injuries, the exact details of which we cannot yet share, but we can tell you that this 14-month-old boy suffered and horrific death, police allege, 
at the hands of his mother. The 28-year-old woman was charged by homicide detectives after a three-day forensic investigation at her Medora Bay home. Paramedics were called to the property by a member of the public on Wednesday morning. They performed CPR on the toddler, but very sadly, he could not be saved. The mother will front court tomorrow, and sources tell me it is very likely that details about her mental state will be revealed. Michael. Jerry, thank you. Anthony Albanese has rejoined the election race after recovering from COVID, touching down in Perth to launch Labor's campaign. But the opposition leader appears to be getting cold feet about his debate with the Prime Minister. Albo and Toto return to Oz. The opposition leader is out of COVID isolation, back on the campaign trail and ready to muck in. I'm feeling much better. Anthony Albanese was immediately back on message. Everything's going up except people's wages. As he homed in on hip pocket pain. An iceberg lettuce, $5.50 for an iceberg lettuce. Leaving the Prime Minister with a barrel full of questions from the shopping trolley. How can you make a lettuce cheaper? You can't necessarily change the price of a lettuce. Um, but what you can do is you can halve petrol tax. And that's exactly what we did. To the risk that soaring wholesale power prices will drive up residential bills. You'll see that it had gone up significantly, particularly in the first quarter of this year. We are now seeing that come down and we can expect that to flow through into prices. And then there's the spectre that the Reserve Bank will lift official interest rates as early as next week. The decision of the Independent Reserve Bank is one for them to make. As the Prime Minister drops the flag on the halfway point of this election race... Shake it, mate! <laughs> Anthony Albanese is heading to Perth for the official launch of Labor's campaign. A crucial part of any election is when the leaders come face to face for debates. There's been one so far. And in January, Anthony Albanese demanded that the Prime Minister front up for many more. I am up for a debate here with the Prime Minister. I'm up for a debate on ABC 7, 9, 10. Scott Morrison has accepted the challenge to meet twice more on the nation's two biggest commercial networks. He said he wanted me to debate me anywhere, anytime. Thursday, Sunday. That's when the dates are. The hall's booked. I'll be there. Now, Labor is refusing to commit. They've got to pick up the phone. It's not Scott Morrison doesn't decide where and when each debate will be. Which is at odds with January's demand. I'll turn up wherever they are. Um, we'll wait and see whether he turns up. The Prime Minister is turning up. The place is Nine Studio in Sydney, Sunday, May 8. Chris Yorman, Nine News. And Louise Rennie, what's on Anthony Albanese's agenda here in Perth? Well, Michael, he's expected to hold a media conference tomorrow, his first since going into isolation, likely heading straight out to those marginal seats that Labor is hoping to steal from the Liberal Party. But, of course, we know the big one is Labor's official party launch at Optus Stadium on Sunday morning, the first time a major party has chosen to launch in Perth since the 1940s. Michael? Lou, thank you for the update. It took seven hours, but a WA mother has been saved from a life-or-death situation bitten by one of the world's deadliest snakes in our outback. An off-duty doctor was hiking nearby, applying emergency first aid until help arrived. A mammoth seven-hour rescue for a mother bitten by a deadly snake at the bottom of one of WA's steepest gorges. Slow and steady. Grateful, so grateful. Megan Brower was hiking in Karajini National Park with her family on Sunday when her husband yelled snake. Turned around and saw it slithering off and thought, gee, that was a close call. Um, and he said, no, it was actually on your feet and it was striking at you. It was a deadly brown snake and it had bitten her. I had a puncture wound and some, some fresh blood there. So, yeah, went into a bit of a, a panic then of what to do. Her five-year-old son bravely watching the daring mission, the young mum floated across three pools of water before the difficult task of lifting her up a steep, narrow path lined with loose rock. I just couldn't really fathom in my mind how they were going to get a stretcher up there, but they did. One saving grace, an off-duty doctor nearby with a satellite phone and first aid kit. The fact that there just happened to be an off-duty doctor there at that exact moment is just so incredibly lucky. Amazing, 
luck, having a pressure bandage applied immediately um, can make all the, all the difference. The 36-year-old wants others to know the importance of having a first aid kit on hikes, incredibly grateful for her team of saviours. Jerry DeMassey, Nine News. It was a billion dollar drug plot doomed from the outset, one of Australia's biggest smuggling attempts, unravelled by a series of shipwrecks and clumsy mistakes. Now an extraordinary recording has been released, unknowingly captured by one of the criminals. Okay, we put it in place. Come on. The moment two bungling smugglers sealed their own fate. We have to put it inside before the other boat come. Wait, this is me. Are we, are we moving now? Yeah. Yeah. But the other boat is coming now. Over 10 muffled minutes, Antoine de Centre and Kurt Palmer load up a luxury yacht with a billion dollars worth of drugs bound for WA. We're not going to be able to put the whole thing in here. Man. The pair candidly discussing their illicit cargo. This is not cocaine, this is, this is the other thing. Unaware every moment is being recorded on the Frenchman's phone. OK, try to clean everything and leave it nice before anyone comes. It was the first in a series of incredible blunders that brought the five-man mission unstuck in 2019. Weeks after setting sail, the doomed drug boat Zero ran aground on the Abrolhos Islands. Police found the pair hiding ashore, along with 40 duffel bags of cocaine, ice and ecstasy stashed under seaweed. Three more men who were supposed to collect the haul on another boat were later arrested in Perth. Palmer and Dissenter were the last of the Abrolhos Five to be convicted, pleading guilty at the start of their trials after a Supreme Court jury listened to the accidental recording. All now facing decades behind bars, while police are yet to lay hands on the alleged kingpin, John Roy, locked up in the UK for other drug crimes. Louise Rennie, Nine News. The man accused of raping former Liberal staffer Brittany Higgins will face trial as planned. Ellie Walsh has the details. It's a win for the prosecution. They've successfully argued to have this case proceed to trial. The defence team for the accused, former Liberal Party staffer Bruce Lerman, had tried to put a stop to this. They'd applied for a stay application, which would have effectively put an end to any future trial. But their application was unsuccessful. This means the rape trial will go ahead. Lerman has been accused of raping Brittany Higgins inside a Parliament House office in 2019. He's pleaded not guilty to one count of sexual intercourse without consent. But tonight I repeat that breaking news. Bruce Lerman, the man accused of raping Brittany Higgins, will face trial after his defence team failed to have the trial permanently halted. The United Nations says it's doing everything possible to get Ukrainian civilians out of the Mariupol steel plant. The horrors of war tonight becoming painfully real as the Secretary General met with President Zelensky. Inside Mariupol's last pocket of defence, the Azovstal steel plant, a makeshift hospital faced a fresh onslaught of shelling and artillery fire with hundreds of wounded inside. <laughs> According to a local official, they're the heaviest strikes on the site yet. But the UN Secretary General in Kyiv after visiting Moscow says an escape out of the apocalypse is still possible, telling President Zelensky Putin has agreed in principle to allow a UN and Red Cross evacuation. We are doing everything we can to make it happen. More than 8,000 cases of suspected war crimes have now been identified, according to Ukrainian investigators, many of them in Bucha and Urupin, where the horrors of war became painfully real to the Secretary-General. The war is an absurdity in the 21st century. US President Biden set to ask Congress for another $33 billion to help Ukraine maintain its fight for freedom. The cost of this fight uh, it's not cheap. 
But caving to aggression is going to be more costly if we allow it to happen. The war is now entering its ninth week, and like many cities, the sight and sound of missile strikes continues in Kyiv. Clean-up underway in Zaporizhia, but there's an overwhelming damage bill. President Zelensky believes Russia's invasion has so far cost Ukraine more than $800 billion Australian dollars. In London, Curry and Greenbank, Nine News. Thousands of WA aged care workers will walk off the job in two weeks as part of a national strike over pay and conditions. Staff from Aegis, Regis and Hall and Pryor will stop work on May 10. The industrial action will impact eight providers across the country, employing more than 12,000 workers in 160 facilities. The United Workers' Union says understaffing is putting aged care patients at risk and is forcing experienced carers to leave. Three of the big four banks say the Reserve Bank will push the button on an interest rate hike next week. As Lizzie Pearl reports, all sides are pointing towards higher mortgage repayments. Economists from Westpac, NAB and the ANZ looked at the inflation figures this week and came to the same conclusion. And that is that the Reserve Bank will move the cash rate on Tuesday, which is earlier than their previous forecasts. Westpac and NAB are both expecting a rise of 0.15 percentage points and a bigger hike in June of 0.25. The reason for all of this, inflation, and of course stoking that fire is fuel prices. But also Bureau of Statistics figures show electricity Electricity prices went up 3.5% in the last year. Home buyers have had incredibly low interest rates for years. The last time we saw the RBA move the cash rate up was November 2010. So the days of the 0.1% cash rate certainly appear to be over. A vandal's destructive rampage has been caught on camera, smashing a dozen windows at Morley businesses. The man used a star picket unleashing on Subway, a gym and an accountant on Walter Road just after six o'clock last night. Tony Marquet was working inside when shattered glass sprayed across the room. So I was sitting at my desk here in this room and this uh, man came up with an iron bar and started smashing all the windows along this. Police want anyone who can identify the bandit to call Crime Stoppers. Mining magnate Andrew Forrest and his wife Nicola have bought Carillion Arcade in the city with plans to revitalise the arcade into a world-class shopping precinct. The billionaire business couple purchased the 5,723 square metre retail site from Dexas, who had plans for a multi-million dollar redevelopment. Retailers were given just weeks to vacate last year, with many shops sitting empty ever since. Margaret River has turned it on for the world's best surfers with enormous waves pushing them to their limits. Conditions were so big, a rogue set came close to capsizing a water safety boat. The waves were about four to five metres high, providing uh, with big southwest conditions the mainstay of the World Surf League circuit and they are expected to be good waves again tomorrow. Elizabeth Creasy is here with your weather details. Liz, a crisp start to the day. Tomo, it was a very chilly morning. In fact, it was our coldest morning in six months with the temperature in the city dropping down to 7.4 degrees at 6.30. That is well below average for April, about six degrees cooler than we'd usually see at this time of the year and makes it our chilliest start to the day since October. Our eastern suburbs were even cooler. Jandicott getting down to just five and a half degrees. The Swan Valley Valley and airport hovering around six. These crisp mornings are sticking around for the next week or so, but so is the sunshine. I will have your weekend forecast a little later, Tomo. It's a great time of the year, Liz. Thank you. Next, Australia lifts a blood donation ban. Thousands of British expats living in WA cleared to donate, saving lives. Plus an urgent warning for Toyota drivers over a car safety recall. How a patient survived three months in a COVID coma and why popular sunscreens have been pulled off the shelves. Australia has lifted its decades-old ban on British expats donating blood due to fears of mad cow disease. Almost 10% of the Perth residents come from the UK, giving a life-saving boost to our vital supplies. 
Abolishing a ban of 22 years, welcoming British blood donations back in Australia. I think it's about time we caught up on the time that we've lost. The deadly mad cow disease crisis that gripped the UK in the 80s and 90s no longer deemed a threat by the Therapeutic Goods Administration. They're confident that we can maintain a blood supply, a safe and secure blood supply here in Australia. It gives more opportunity for people to get blood and gives us opportunities to give it. Couldn't understand why it was in place, so none of us had mad cows, so <laughs> I probably am mad, but... Thousands of West Aussies who lived in the UK for six months between 1980 and 1996 now cleared to donate. As soon as they've bought it online, yep, yeah, I'll be one of the first in the queue. It's very much a hot topic in WA. That's because almost one in ten Perth residents were born in England, 9.5% of our population, compared to the Australian average of just 4.2%. Butler, Perth's UK expat capital known as Little Britain. Even and yeah, in, in Clarkson, it's, it's pretty much Little Britain as well. Red Cross Lifeblood is now working through system updates, but expects to be ready to start receiving donations from people previously banned by the end of the year. An announcement on that will be made in the coming weeks. Zarisha Bradley, Nine News. A driver has remarkably survived a horror crash in Perth's north. Police say the 23-year-old man ran into the back of a stationary truck on Walcott Street in Mount Lawley just after 10 o'clock last night. The impact of the crash was so severe, the front of the Holden was crumpled under the back of the tip truck. He escaped injury but was taken to hospital for a checkup. Toyota is recalling 26,000 of its best-selling cars over a potential software fault which could cause the stability control to switch off without warning. The recall applies to some 2021 and 2022 models, including the Land Cruiser 300 Series four-wheel drive, the Mirai hydrogen car and SUVs from Kluger and RAV4 hybrid ranges. The full list of the vehicles involved can be found on the Toyota website. Australian doctors have used an extreme life support measure to save some of the sickest COVID patients. In one extraordinary case, a 33-year-old man was kept in a coma for almost three months. It's a slow climb back. I get really, really tired just getting up, walking to the fridge or walking to the door and like. But Stephen Teleski will take it over his hospital stay that started last October. About day five, I remember the nurse hitting the, the emergency buzzer hey, in the room and then all the big doctors kind of flew in. Uh, you, know, you know, a bit of a panic. The COVID he thought was mild, anything but. I just remember my, my chest, you know, breathing with that big apparatus, my chest was about to explode, um, just so hard to breathe. The only option, extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, an ECMO machine that would take blood from his body and fill it with oxygen. So the lung gets uh, what's called lung rest and the, the machine outside the body does the gas exchange. It also requires an induced coma. I thought, yeah, it's all right, I'll just go to sleep for a couple of days. It'll be all right, nice rest. And my chest needed a break. 84 days later. Opening my eyes, uh, obviously the venue had changed. And when the hell did this happen? Um, yeah, and what's going on? So that was the initial feeling. And then, yeah, discovering it was a, a different year was was very, very scary. In all, 64 COVID patients in Victoria have had the extreme form of prolonged life support for an average of 41 days each, one man for 200 days in total, more than six months and more than double Stephen's case. Medical professionals were divided over the use of the ECMO machine on COVID patients, some of them not convinced such a dangerous life support measure would work. Patients like Stephen grateful the Alfred took the chance. Heidi Murphy, Nine News. Moderna has requested emergency use authorization of its COVID vaccine for babies, toddlers and children in the United States. Only children five or older can get the jab, but the company has applied to the Food and Drug Administration and could have approval by June of this year. Australia's medicines regulator has issued a recall for several types of sunscreen after low levels of the potentially cancer-causing chemical benzene were detected. The recall impacts certain batches of Cancer Council-sensitive SPF 50, two types of Nivea, a lotion spray coconut beach and baby bum mineral. You can return the products for a full refund. Finance Now and Wall Street Titans spent the night unveiling eye-watering profits while the Australian market finished the week on a positive note. Business reporter Chris Kohler has more. 
Last night, investors got a look under the hood of some of the biggest companies in the world. For the quarter, McDonald's announced a 1.1 billion US dollar profit, but said it is worried about inflation making its burgers too expensive. They're already 8% pricier than last year. Amazon said it lost $3.8 billion in the quarter and also warned of a few rough months ahead. And Apple, the biggest company in the world, announced quarterly revenue of nearly $100 billion. That is more money than Coles, Woolworths, Telstra and Qantas are worth combined and it made it in just three months. And Facebook's parent company Meta shot up 17% overnight after revealing better than expected profits. Meanwhile, the Aussie market finished a disappointing week on a strong note, up another 78 points today, and the local currency was buying 71 US cents, 68 euro cents and 57 British pence. Next, Rottnest Island's renewable revolution. The holiday hotspot goes green in a multi-million dollar makeover. Plus, a massive fireball engulfs a truck carrying a dangerous load. Australia's Olympic chief hands over the flame after three decades and the world's rarest sneakers on show, worth more than cars, even houses. Rottnest Island will undergo a renewables revolution in a bid to cut power outages and support ecotourism. The $60 million green plan is hoping to fuel new life into the holiday hotspot. On the surface, it's one of Rotnest's brightest colours, but the island wants to be even greener. All our businesses, um, all the operators, our supermarkets, every, all, all our day-to-day -day tourism businesses are affected by the power outages. Its ageing and fragile electricity network is being granted a second life, thanks to a splash of the green stuff in next month's state budget. Additional uh, solar panels, uh, two new wind turbines, a large battery and upgrades to electricity infrastructure. This will stabilise the system, uh, continuity of power and then obviously see our renewables increase to 75%. Currently, renewables only contribute 36% of the island's power supply. The upgrades will also reduce the reliance on fossil fuels. Minimum 500,000 litres of diesel being saved a year that is currently being barged across. It will take around four years to fully make the eco switch. In that time, Rottnest Island will rely on its other new features to excite international travellers. The hard border cut visitation by 30% but demand is high again. We're preparing ourselves to rebuild, ready for those numbers to come back. Rottnest is one of uh, the icons, I think, of Australian tourism, and this investment will ensure that it continues to do that. A bright future for Rotto and a lasting legacy for its little locals. Joshua Dorn, Nine News. The world's richest man has been drawn into the Johnny Depp Amber Heard legal battle once again over donations to a domestic violence charity. A witness claims Elon Musk covered nearly half of his then girlfriend's donation despite the actress pledging to give $3.5 million or half the money she made from her divorce settlement with Johnny Depp. Ukrainian refugees have walked alongside Holocaust survivors in this year's March of the Living. The event, which has been cancelled the past two years, takes place at the former Auschwitz-Birkenau camp in Poland. One survivor says she finds the war in Ukraine desperately sad because people have not learned the lessons of the Holocaust. Two trucks have, called, have crashed on a major highway erupting into a fireball. This is the aftermath of the fiery collision in Ohio, a flash of light and soaring ball of flames. One of the semi-trailers had been carrying a highly flammable glue which sped up the inferno. Donald Trump has returned to social media, posting on his Twitter rival site, Truth Social. The former US president wrote, I'm back with the hashtag Kathofi, referring to a typo he made when slamming media coverage which went viral in 2017. Trump says he won't go back to Twitter even if Elon Musk reinstates his account. Australia's Olympic chief has called time on his career leaving a legacy as one of the world's most influential sports administrators. John Coates helped steer the country to Olympic glory winning the rights to host the biggest sporting show on earth. For three decades, he's been Australia's Lord of the Rings. But now the Olympic Committee President, John Coates, is preparing to step down from one of sport's most coveted jobs. It's an appropriate time for me to leave, and I think I'm leaving it in very, very good hands 
A Sydney solicitor, a wheeler and dealer, the 71-year-old masterminded Australia's transformation into an Olympic powerhouse. The winner is Sydney, Australia. He outsmarted the Chinese, with Beijing the early favourite, to pull off a Games declared the best ever. Coates' sway quickly elevated him to the IOC in 2002. He was a loyal lieutenant to the President's ROG and BARC overseeing future Olympics. He was the IOC's man in Tokyo as COVID forced the postponement of the 2020 Games. One of John Coates' most important legacies, rewriting the rules and the bidding process to host an Olympics, cutting excess and waste. And for Australia, it paid immediate dividends. That the Games of the 35th Olympiad are awarded to Brisbane, Australia. <laughs> Coates may be stepping down, but he won't disappear. We're still to deliver the Brisbane Games, and that's a challenge which I hope to be still part of. A former Olympic swimmer, Mark Stockwell, and the team's chef de mission from Tokyo, Ian Chesterman, are now vying for the top job. Damien Ryan, Nine News. Online sales for rare footwear have become big business, but it comes with a hefty price tag. There's a new quirky way to check if your purchase is authentic, with some sneakers costing more than a house. The humble sneaker now has its own museum. I got all the Jordans, I got all the Jordans. I write a verse about my kicks and then I go record it. Welcome to eBay's Museum of Authentics, a collection of rare and mega expensive sneakers. Sneaker superfan Michael Fan is showing 14 pairs, among them his Air Jordans, game worn and signed by Michael Jordan himself. A similar pair last sold for $745,000. This pair is actually specially designed and made for Michael Jordan himself. Shoes of all shapes and sizes are on display, including some Pharrell Chanel's. Just 500 pairs were made. They have listing prices of twelve dollars to $18,000. The pop-up museum is to demonstrate how eBay's authenticity guarantee helps provide customers with confidence when buying luxury items online. Sneakers are big business. In eBay in Australia, sneakers have experienced triple digit growth. We're now seeing a sneaker sold on the platform every two minutes. Part of the company's authentication process, sniffing sneakers. Every pair of sneakers that we get, we have to sniff them. So we sniff it like this and it's got a very unique smell if it's an authentic pair. Now, given this is a museum, none of these shoes are actually for sale, which is just as well, given how much they cost. Might have to stick with my 12 buck jobs from Big W. Alan Ruskell, Nine News. Ahead, fears a sight-saving treatment is about to become out of reach while the crucial injections to treat a chronic eye disease are under threat. And a smiling queen steps out for her first engagement as a 96-year-old. The time to head to Optus Stadium for sport with Matthew Pavich and Pav the Dockers are ready for the AFL's toughest road trip. Oh, it's almost Geelong down there. The Cattery is no easy task, but Fremantle feel it's the best shot at glory. Tucker's ton, why Darcy believes it's his and the Dockers' time to shine. Plus, the supercar stars ready to go full throttle on return to Perth. And Marg's mayhem, a do or die day for Slater, sent into survival mode. The Dockers are embracing the fierce challenge of facing the Cats in Geelong tomorrow. Bullish their game style will hold up. Midfielder Darcy Tucker plays game 100, confident his best is yet to come. A captain's run at the Cattery, the scene of some of Fremantle's most famous moments. This to send them into a home preliminary final for the first time in their history. For better or worse. Walters! Mish. Biggest challenge in footy nearly, um, Geelong and Geelong. Frio's current crop with small sample sizes at GMHBA Stadium. Even myself, I've only played there once in my AFL career. But under no illusion of the task at hand, Darcy Tucker adamant the unique skinny ground can play into their hands. I think it really suits our game style as well. We're a good defensive team, so um, the narrow ground will help us and hopefully help us play our way. The second place Dockers ready to skin the cats. Yeah, we know when we play our way, it, 
it does work. So, yeah, really exciting change. The milestone man with an indifferent start to the year, overcoming pre-season hamstring issues and a frightening seizure in the derby, to now be fighting fit. A bit scary, but as soon as I woke up, I was fine and it was all positive news. Raising the bat tomorrow in his 100th match, already eyeing his next ton. I still think I've got a long way to go. I don't think I've reached my best yet. Hopefully I can snag 100 more. That would be nice. Bonnie Rayner, Nine News. Well, if it's not COVID sweeping through the clubs, good old-fashioned gastro is still around too. J Collingwood's Jordan Dugowie and Will Oskin Elliott both hit ahead of Sunday's clash with the Suns. Yeah, we've had a little bit of gastro go through the place. Um, a couple of coaches have been down this week too, and, and now um, Will and, and also Geordie have been out today. So, um, yeah, hopefully in the next 24 hours they, they all, they're a little bit better. And a huge selection call at the Bombers. Dylan Schill dropped for Sunday's must-win match against the Bulldogs. One of WA's Sheffield Shield final heroes, Aaron Hardy, is officially on the international radar. The 23-year-old all-rounder chosen to represent Australia A against Sri Lanka this winter. White and Red Bull squads named for a seven-week tour and playing three spinners in two tests is under consideration. We've seen it done once in the past, I think, a test match in Bangladesh. Um, and again, we'll just, we'll just assess that. That's one of the great things about having a little bit of depth in that area with, with Ash Agar, uh, Mitch Swepson and Nathan Lyon. You've got all bases covered there. WA quick Jai Richardson has again been snubbed for tests but is in Australia's T20 squad. Well, it's a nervous night for some of the world's best surfers with the battle to make the tour cut on tomorrow at the Margaret River Pro. Large swell making life tough for Kelly Slater with monster conditions forecast in the coming days. Five lay days due to poor conditions quickly forgotten. The Wild West whipping up. A shark protection boat uh, out there just making it over that. Four and a half metre swell causing chaos. He's managed to flip his board over. A difficult day for 11-time world champion Kelly Slater. Last in his heat, needing to win tomorrow's eliminator to survive. Rips into a carve there, incomplete though. WA's Jack Robinson progressing at his home break. New South Wales rookie Callum Robson bringing his impressive Bells Beach form across the Nullarbor. And Callum hangs Whoa. on. The V8 supercars were all back into Perth this weekend for the first time since 2019. When you lose something, um, you realise how cool an event that is. So, yeah, to be back is fantastic. Fan favourite Mark Winterbottom knows the track better than most winning seven times and promising to put on a show. Saturday night, prime time, racing, uh, under lights, fireworks going off, cars look fantastic. And an impressive Major League debut for former Perth Heat pitcher Bo Salsa. Beautiful. One, two, three. The 27-year-old striking out four batters for Pittsburgh Pirates. How about this? Bo knows how to pitch. <laughs> six up, six down in his Major League debut. Salsa unable to lift them to victory, going down 12-8 to the Brewers. Paddy Sweeney, Nine News. Dallas, Philadelphia and Phoenix have all clinched first round series wins in the NBA. Utah's season over after Bogdan Bogdanovich had this chance to send the series to a decisive seventh game. Toss cross court. Bogdanovich, ball fake. Bogdanovich misses on a three ball and it's over. And Melbourne United are one win away from back to back NBL grand finals after an emphatic win over the Tasmanian Jack Jumpers. Now, remember, remember the name Trayvon Walker, the defensive linesman today, snapped up as the number one pick in the MB NFL draft and now headed to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Thousands of fans turning out for the announcement in Las Vegas. The big surprise, the first quarterback wasn't taken until pick 20. Tomo, that doesn't really matter. We know picks and spots don't really yeah. matter. The great Tom Brady, 199 all those years ago. And he's still going strong now. Pav, thank you. <laughs> Next, fears the cost of a crucial eye treatment is about to go through the roof. Plus, the new diet lollipop promising to make weight loss simple. And Elizabeth Creasy, a picture-perfect autumn weekend. Tomo, plenty of sunshine, but some cool nights ahead and the run of dry days will continue right through next week. I'll have all the details soon.
Welcome back. Let's take a look at the biggest stories making news in Perth this evening. WA has lifted almost all of its restrictions from mask mandates to proof of vaccination and close contact rules, finally putting us in line with the rest of the country. Amanda Mother has been charged with murder, accused of killing her 14-month-old son. Anthony Albanese has rejoined the election race after recovering from COVID, touching down in Perth to launch Labor's campaign. And a WA mother has been saved from a life or death situation, bitten by one of the world's deadliest snakes in our outback. There are fears tonight the cost of a crucial eye treatment is about to go through the roof. Medicare wants to cut the rebate for this sight-saving injection, putting thousands of Australians at risk of blindness. Michael Wolf didn't know much about macular degeneration until he spoke to his GP about his eyes. I'm starting to get these pixelations moving around. They come, they go. Without urgent treatment, the active 77-year-old would lose sight in his right eye, which was worse. I guess the option was I would be blind in that eye. Medications given through eye injections target the root of the problem, the abnormal growth of blood vessels and swelling. The injections are absolutely critical to controlling the condition. Uh, more than 90% of people, we can stop them from losing further vision. But a Medicare Review Task Force recommended cutting the existing rebate. 70% reduction in what our patients are receiving to subsidise the treatment um, and so it's a huge cause of, uh, of concern. The average patient already pays about $1,900 in annual out-of-pocket fees for seven treatments. Slashing the rebate would push those costs to more than $3,900. Michael says it will have a huge impact when he goes onto the pension. When I don't work, it stops. The injections would probably stop. The Macular Disease Foundation says a cut to the rebate will affect about 47,000 Australians who need the injections to help them from becoming blind. That's the number predicted to drop out of treatment. Michael is pleading with both sides of politics to protect the existing rebate. This is about a growing population of aged people who will face going blind. Gabriella Rogers, Nine News. If you've ever wanted to eat sweets while slimming down, this candy claims to tide you over between meals. Yeah. Here's the name and get ready for it. Celebrity Slim's Cheeky Little Sucker Lollipops are the latest product to be endorsed by Married at First Sight star Jessica Power. The lollipops are an appetite suppressor. They've got fibre in them, which keeps you fuller for longer and they taste great. They're easy to carry around in your handbag. The reality TV contestant also launched a new a low-calorie wine. Hollywood star Olivia Wilde has been served with custody papers while promoting her upcoming film in front of a crowd of 4,000 people. The actor and director was given an envelope titled Personal and Confidential. Wilde shares two children with former partner Jason Sudeikis, who has denied having any knowledge of when the papers would be delivered. The Queen was all smiles as she met with the Swiss President and his wife at Windsor. It was Her Majesty's first in-person engagement since her 96th birthday, dressed in pearls and paisley prints. Stay with us. Elizabeth Creasy is back with all of your weather details right after this break. Welcome back. It was a very cold start to the day and it's going to be another chilly night tonight. At the moment, the temperature is hovering around 17 degrees and this afternoon we had a top of 23 after an overnight low of 7, which made it our coldest morning in six months. The cool nights and warm sunny afternoons will stick around for the next week or so with a ridge of high pressure building over the south of the state, while on the east coast, a trough and cold front are crossing South Australia, New South Wales, Victoria and Tasmania. Tasmania, bringing cool, wet and thundery conditions across the weekend. So Sydney, Canberra, Brisbane and Hobart will all have a wet day tomorrow, while Melbourne and Adelaide will remain dry and partly cloudy.
Back in the west, some towns through the Pilbara will pick up a bit of rain, but the showers will remain very light. The cloud cover helping to cool things down. A top of 29 degrees in Caratha, 28 in Port Hedland and 25 in Marble Bar. Sunshine will dominate conditions in the southern half of the state. A top of 20 degrees for Kalgoorlie, 23 in Northam and 22 in Bunbury. It'll be a nice day on the water around Perth tomorrow. Seas below one metre and winds remaining fairly calm, getting up to 15 knots. The temperature will dip into the single digits around Kalamunda tonight, down to 9 degrees. Warmer along the coast with minimums between 11 and 12 degrees. Daytime maximums hitting the low to mid-20s. It will be another cool morning in the city as well. 10 degrees will be the minimum tonight and we'll have another beautiful sunny afternoon tomorrow. 24 will be the top. The sunshine will stick around for the next week with clear skies forecast until next weekend. But that does mean our nights will remain pretty chilly down to 10 or 11 degrees. Sunday looking like the warmest day this week with a top of 25. Maximums hovering around 22 or 24 degrees after that. So lots of stunning autumn weather ahead. Tomo. That is a great forecast. Liz, thank you. That is nine news for this Friday. Thanks for your company. A current affair is next. Enjoy your weekend. Good night.